Prova, 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 prova. Ok. So, <coughs> I'm sorry for the, the fact that the, the uh, recording was not available when I finished the lecture, so I'm re-recording it. Hopefully that will be useful for, for some of you. Uh, trying to say more or less what uh, I already said during the lecture. So first of all, we said we, we are going to focus uh, on the second exercise that is uh, working on um, strings and uh, uh, we are going to uh, develop a small program to manage the list of users uh, in a Q&A website, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, we have uh, a, a string, a big string, uh, with a list of names uh, or, of people in a comma-separated list form, so there are commas separating the, non the names, like uh, in the second uh, line. We need to handle the string um, and uh, process the string, create an array containing one name per array position, but without extra spaces or other strange uh, characters like new lines and so on. And then create a second array, computing the acronyms of the people as the initial letters of the name. So like uh, if we take an example like Luigi De Russis, LDR, that should be the acronym and should be put everything in capital letter. And of course print everything and so on if you want in alphabetical order, etc. Uh, differently from <coughs> what uh, we did in the previous lecture, uh, let's have a look at the uh, first sketch of solution and uh, we will modify it as needed in case it's needed. So, of course, always starting with use string, you remember strict mode of JavaScript, and then you have uh, uh, this string, you see that we use the template liter uh, literals uh, to define it, you remember that we can use double quotes, single quotes, a template literal, with template literals you can uh, insert also new lines and things in a natural way. So just uh, going on to the new line with the uh, uh, enter key. And then, and then we would like to process the, the, the string. So basically splitting it on the commas and creating arrays and so on. Okay. So, uh, well, we should make a copy maybe of the string. Well, actually, this is not really needed. Remember that, uh, you know, for arrays, uh, make a copy uh, 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 makes sense because uh, otherwise you have reference to the same array and you don't keep the original one. But here, you remember that uh, 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 strings in JavaScript are a primitive type. So basically, if we copy a string value, we have a new string. You can check it on the Python tutor if you like. Okay. So actually, this is not really needed, but uh, you know, just for convenience, uh, uh, the solution is implemented like this. I mean, and then, uh, and then we need to check if there's something, some methods that are convenient for us uh, for for working in the way we would like, like splitting on on a certain set of characters and so on. And luckily for us, there's a split, uh, which is a method for the strings in JavaScript that uh, split a string into substrings uh, and they pu they put uh, it puts them into an array an array of strings of course um, and the separator is a string actually it can be a single character or more characters but uh, you know we will use a single character which is actually in a string anyway in javascript because you know that the, the, there are no primitive types in the form of characters um, so let's see what happens until now. Okay, so let's see uh, what does this console log uh, print. Okay, so we execute the, the code as before. Node uh, week 01x2. Okay, so let's have a look at the first print. You see that we have uh, six names, uh, five commas, so six elements in the array Luigi, De Russis, Luca, Manel, etc. But you see this. Uh, white spaces or blanks before and after sometimes and the new lines etc and we would like to remove them so what can we do here well we can you know have loop so uh, iterate over the elements of the array with a classical uh, iteration for the moment we cannot do anything else okay why we use the uh, i index here 
Uh, that's because uh, we cannot use the for off syntax, which is a very a JavaScript uh, typical way of doing um, iteration over arrays on or iterable elements. That's because we need the index uh, because we want to override the content uh, of the uh, array at a certain index position. So we take the content of the array at the index i, we process it. Uh, luckily, there's this nice function for string stream, so which uh, removes the leading and trailing white space and line terminators and this kind of invisible characters or characters that insert spaces from a string just from the beginning of the end. And the result is returned, and so basically we assign it again to the same uh, element uh, uh, in the array. Okay? And so we can print again console log names, uh, which we actually already did uh, in the previous execution. And you see that uh, there are no more uh, new lines uh, and empty spaces and yeah, blanks, uh, uh, white spaces, etc. Okay, so let's keep it uh, as it was before. And then we can compute the acronyms. This is standard C code. I mean, nothing really speci special. But uh, let's uh, have a look, uh, you know, standard C approach, of course, JavaScript code, but standard C approach, I mean, uh, looping on, on the array uh, with the JavaScript way, const name of names. Uh, names is uh, uh, the array, this array that contains the, the full names. A name will contain a single element, and then we access the first letter of the first uh, uh, of the name, and then we assign it to a, an S, which will be a string, and to uppercase is a method for for strings, and converts all the alphabetical characters in a string to uppercase. Uh, here we have only one, but uh, we already said many times that you know strings uh, can be also one character long. And so S contains uh, one character, and then we loop over the rest of the string, which can be uh, iterated like an array from index 1 to name length excluded. Uh, e++, if the previous character, so I minus 1, was a, a blank, we add, so we concatenate the old string with the, the new one, which is the uppercase letter that we found. Okay. And so in the end, we have S, which is actually the acronym that we will push, so add at the end of the uh, array, initial array that was empty, and at the end will be full of the acronym. Okay. So, of course, we can debug uh, these things uh, with the debugger, but I will show the debugger next time, maybe. Uh, here, uh, uh, let's say we can, we can check what's happening, for instance, just uh, simply by printing what's happening inside the program. So if you run it again, you see that uh, the acronyms are going to be formed here because the S contains more and more letters and so on. Of course, you should print the first letter if you want to see the first one. So I have a, a console log here, but I mean, it's not really uh, needed. Uh, okay, it's just to, a way to, to debug a program using uh, the, 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 um, the print and uh, by, by showing stuff in the console, okay? Okay, so uh, this is the full program and it's just a way to, to practice a little bit with strings. Remember, the only thing you need to keep in mind is that you cannot modify single elements in strings, okay? Single characters in strings. Okay, so um, we can stop here with the examples and come back with to the to the slides and talk about uh, something more interesting. Okay, so we can continue and uh, discuss a, a new very important topic for JavaScript objects and functions. Okay, so objects. Objects are very peculiar in JavaScript. You need to know very well objects first and then functions as well. So first of all, forget the object concept that comes from object-oriented programming in many other languages. So here, object exists without a class. A class, you know, it's a template 
basically like in Java if you think Java uh, the class is a template that says how to create instances and there may there may might be many many instances of the same class which is the single template Okay. Each one with different values, etc., but with the same uh, schema for properties, methods, etc. Okay. Here it's not this way. Basically, objects here are all instances. So each object is independent of the other object. It's created and it has a certain set of properties, a method, etc., but it's not derived from a template. Okay, so it just created directly specifying the properties and each object is independent of all the other objects. Okay, and moreover in JavaScript all objects are dynamic. So basically you can delete properties, add new properties just on single objects, so on single, let's say instances we will call it, but there are no instances because there are no classes. Okay, or we can redefine properties, so assign new values, assign uh, a new type of values uh, and uh, of course we can also redefine a method actually for how um, JavaScript works eh? so um, since uh, functions are actually reference to objects actually property and methods are not really different I mean the only difference is that when uh, if you use a property that contains a reference to a function uh, you can use the brackets after the, <coughs> the value and you, so you can call the function with a certain set of parameters the, and uh, but there's actually no no difference between properties and methods because actually they are uh, all all of them are values contained in properties of the object and uh, another big difference with the many other programming object oriented programming languages like java for instance is that every property every method is always public we, there are no private or protected uh, properties okay everything is public everything if you have a direct reference to the object you can access all properties all methods okay and actually there's no real difference between properties and methods as i was saying before because actually methods are simply reference to different kind of objects so function objects okay so objects are an an ordered collection of properties this is a bit different with arrays arrays you know that uh, are um, uh, an ordered list because the, the index is a number 0 1 2 and so on okay there might be all so in javascript it doesn't really matter but they are ordered uh, here in, instead uh, each uh, um, um, property as a name that we sometimes we call key and the value okay and you store and retrieve uh, and use this property value using the property names how do you create the objects well very simple it is very sim similar to other scripting languages like python you open the curly brackets and then you specify property name colon the property value comma and other uh, properties okay so let's see the example book author uh, colon and recall so author is the name of the property so what we call also the key and, and recall is a string it's a value so here we have three properties with three string values and one property with a number value okay we can also define properties using the the, the, the syntax of uh, strings uh, this is especially useful if you want to define strange properties like containing spaces and stuff like that but uh, I mean it's not recommended but the, this uh, way of writing is equivalent okay if there are no peculiarities that prevent uh, to write directly the property name uh, without quotes okay so property names are basically strings must be unique of course otherwise we confuse the values uh, i mean there cannot be two properties with the same name they're created at object initialization but also can be added and removed with the delete operator after the object creation each object is independent of all the other objects as we say so basically they are collection of properties as we said in the slide before Property values can be a reference to any JavaScript value, in addition to being, of course, primitive types, uh, strings, uh, numbers, uh, boolean, etc. Um, may also be reference to functions, and in this case, just for a convention, we typically we call these uh, properties methods. Uh, as an analogy with other uh, object-oriented programming methods. 
Okay, but actually they are properties containing a reference to a function. Accessing properties is very simple. There's a dot notation you see here, book dot author. It's very similar to other programming language. Or you can also use the square bracket notation. Okay, and inside the square brackets you need to put the string or an expression that evaluates to a string, which is equivalent to the name of the property you want to access. Of course, uh, sometimes uh, this uh, uh, way of writing is mandatory because uh, like uh, there's a space in the property name. Uh, we cannot just uh, uh, write like this because the, the, the JavaScript interpreter will get confused. But it, uh, these are really special cases and we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't really care too much about this. The important thing is that uh, we can use the bracket notation because sometimes uh, um, we need to use an expression to access the property. Okay, so an expression that evaluates to a string that tells us the name of the property. Uh, the, this notation with the uh, square bracket uh, looks very much like uh, array access, but actually the index is a string. This is uh, commonly referred to as associative arrays in many other programming languages. And um, it's uh, just a way of uh, uh, have a collection of properties that can be accessed by, by keys, keys which can be of any type, typically uh, strings. Okay, JavaScript has strings. Uh, this is an example on how to delete properties, but I must say that some, we typically don't need to use it uh, so often, okay, because typically we want to add properties and memorize information, store information properties without doing anything uh, uh, in addition. And, and maybe when we don't need the object anymore, the object is just discarded with the whole content of properties. Okay, this is another peculiarity, how to set, so create a property with a certain name if it doesn't exist yet, but starting from the value of a JavaScript expression, so typically the content of another variable. Uh, you need to use this uh, notation with the uh, uh, syntax uh, that includes the, the, the squared bracket on the left side of the assignment, and then the colon and the value. OK, uh, this will be useful when we are writing like event handler in, uh, in uh, um, web programming and so on. Sometimes can be useful um, <coughs> when we need just to access uh, properties. Uh, we can just use the, 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 the classical squared brackets notation. OK. So inside, uh, beware of the quotes uh, in the sense that if you put the quotes, that's the name of the property's title. If you don't put the quotes, this is an expression, JavaScript expression, so we'll take the content of the variable name title, that can be another string like uh, something else, and we use it uh, to access the property with that name in book. Okay, so if title was auto, string auto, we will access the property auto. Okay, beware, try not to be too complex when uh, using expression in accesses properties because the, the code can be, uh, can become uh, very uh, unreadable very quickly. Okay, how do we access uh, uh, a property in case they are not defined? Well, uh, this is a bit strange. I mean, in, in JavaScript, uh, uh, you can access properties that are not defined yet. And that's uh, more or less what happens when you access uh, a variable that has not been initialized. So you get the value undefined, you know, that the special value that we talked about uh, in the previous lecture. Um, so uh, let's say we have uh, an object that is named the book. I mean, the, the reference of the object is contained in the variable book. You want to access book author, so the author is the name of the property. If the property is being defined, this value will be truthy. Okay, and so uh, we can use it uh, to do something else. Otherwise, we should be aware of the fact that the book author doesn't exist. Okay. Uh, the nice thing is that uh, uh, we have an operator uh, double end 
that we can use to check if uh, uh, properties exist uh, in objects uh, and write a complex expression that basically are equivalent, so like the, the previous one, uh, in a much more compact, I would say readable format in a certain sense when you get used to it. So this expression says the value of, uh, of the expression is the value of, well, let's check if book is uh, truthy. If it's truthy, let's check if author book is truthy, that is a property. If the property doesn't exist, it's undefined, and so surname will contain undefined. If book author is truthy, so it's not undefined, the property author exists, uh, let's access the property surname, and so this value will be put into surname, okay? Uh, so actually in surname, uh, I would like to point out that there's, this is not a boolean value, this is actually the value either of book or book author or book author surname, okay? Well, of course it may happen that uh, book is not uh, defined, so, uh, well not defined, not, doesn't contain uh, uh, values or it's undefined, and so surname might, might happen to be undefined, okay, so containing the value undefined, like in the, in the code here, okay, so the two expressions are actually equivalent, but the second one is much more common when you are accessing properties of objects for which you are not sure that uh, the properties actually exist, okay. You can iterate over properties, it's not that common, you have the for in, uh, well, uh, I wouldn't spend that that much time on this because uh, actually there are not so many times in which you need to, to do this kind of things unless you really want to use this object as a, uh, an associative array and you want to uh, enumerate all the whole content of the object okay uh, but uh, you know uh, yeah, it's not a classical way in which you use uh, the, the, the for as an iteration okay Object contains uh, some predefined methods like keys and entries. Keys uh, returns a list of all the uh, property names of the object. And uh, so a list means an array actually with uh, uh, as, as, um, that has uh, as the elements, uh, all the names of the properties in the form of strings. Okay, and entries as an array uh, that contains in each element another array made of two uh, uh, elements. The first element is the string that corresponds to the key, so the name of the property, the second to the value of that property. Okay, so this can be convenient sometimes, uh, you know, to, to, to access uh, stuff and print it uh, for debugging purposes and so on. Okay. Coping objects, that's another topic, uh, it's very similar to what happens with the arrays. Uh, if you just copy the value of a variable that refers to an object, you are copying the reference. So that's exactly the same that happened with the arrays. So you create aliases, if you look at this code into the Python tutor, you see the arrows that point to the same uh, section of the memory that contains the values of the object. If you want to copy the object, uh, uh, you need to rely on some uh, library function like object assign. Object assign assigns uh, to this object, which is actually a way to create a new object, empty object, all the properties and their values that contained in the object book. Okay? So, and the result of this code is two objects, two independent objects with two independent and different references, of course. This is not the only uh, way that we can copy objects, okay? We'll see one, one more a bit later in the slides, uh, even a more intuitive one, but uh, for the moment let's stick with this, uh, this way. So let's see how object assign works. Uh, so the object assign returns the new object, which is important especially in this case where the, we don't have the reference to this new object because we just created it inside the function call, okay? So it's important to have the reference to the new object, so the, to the target, and then it takes all the properties of the source and they put, it puts it into the target. 
and if the properties already exist, they are simply overwritten in terms of the value. Okay, uh, so that's uh, uh, that's important, and uh, it's a very um, uh, very used in, in JavaScript code when you need to add uh, properties to an object uh, that maybe already exists. This object assigns, solves you a lot of things for you. Beware, of course, this is a shallow copy only, as with the arrays. We can try this example in the Python tutor. Okay. So. The example is, is here. Uh, okay. So that's the example. Uh, okay, you see there's an object, uh, author pages, that is the um, book. And there's another one that references the first one. So the source is a reference to book. Okay. And let's edit this code, adding the copy that we have on the slides so study to um, it's here okay let's see the result you see the result the study to as another object but the arrow points to the original object book. That's because the reference has been copied, not mm, I mean, it's not the object that has been duplicated as well. Okay? If we want to duplicate this, uh, we need to write something else. Another object assign, use another function or write a function ourselves uh, and so on. Okay? Uh, <coughs> so just beware of this uh, like with the arrays. Um, <coughs> Okay, so of course we can manage properties uh, using this uh, annotation with the default values, so copying the default values in the target and then updating with the values of what is interesting for us. And uh, so if there is a property in the source that will be overwritten, uh, I mean, it will overwrite the default value and so on, and the result will be in the target that is the one that, is be, that will be returned by the assign. And typically here we put the empty object, okay? The new empty object. Uh, so, yes, that's the way it works. Here is an interesting thing, uh, that is uh, how to use the spread operator uh, on the objects. Note that this is available only from ES9, so ES2018, with respect to ES6, that is the one that we typically use. Okay, uh, But for us it doesn't really matter because the Node.js, the latest version of course, supports ES9 and also more recent versions and also in the browser when we will use a framework to develop in React and uh, in this system, I mean there will be a transpiler and you know methods that will convert the code from recent version to, of uh, JavaScript to the uh, ES6. Uh, transparent to us, so uh, we don't need to care about this. So we can simply use this system, okay? So what does the spread operator do? Uh, does, uh, what does the, the spread operator do, sorry, on uh, objects? So, um, uh, you see, it's more or less like with the arrays. That is because with the arrays, it was so convenient that the uh, committee behind the JavaScript uh, decided to extend it to, to object as well. Okay, so when you assign something to an object, so the properties are assigned depending on the name that you have, A, B, like this, A will get to value 1, B will get value 2, and the rest, the spread, the rest will be spread 
on the re on the other variable. So others will contain an object this time. It's not an array, but it's an object with properties equal to the rest of the properties that you are not listed here. Okay. Not that this is uh, uh, not they they could be not in this order. The match is done on the on the name of the property. Okay. Uh, also, not this uh, way of writing a new object. So we open the, the bracket and then we spread the old object. And so here we have a copy of the object. So we can avoid using this object assign if we really just want to have a copy. Okay. Or maybe a copy and uh, then write uh, or overwrite something else in, in, the, in the new object. So it's a really handy way of uh, handling. Uh, you know the the properties into an of an object there is also this operator in which is actually the same of the for in because it lists all the uh, i mean it checks uh, properties inside an object okay so if you use it alone basically it checks if uh, the property exists in the object which is a bit different from the fact that it might be a, uh, a might have the value undefined okay so a property might exist and have a value undefined that's one thing uh, and uh, if you check for a property and it doesn't exist it re i mean the expression returns the value undefined so you have no way of discriminating if it's undefined because the property doesn't exist or the property has actually the value undefined so with this operator you can discriminate between the two cases but this is really i would say a peculiar uh, situation it doesn't happen so often uh, in, in your code because you decide what is contained in your object Okay, so summarizing what we said about the object, the object creation, uh, this is the preferred way. Open the bracket and put whatever you want inside the object, or leave it empty, or use the uh, the the library functions. Okay, uh, there's an additional uh, way of doing that, but uh, we we will talk about this about this uh, after we talked about functions. Okay, uh, and remember that uh, by creating a new when creating a new object, of course, you can always spread a content inside, okay, as we just said. Okay. So let's now talk about functions. Functions are a really a fundamental element in JavaScript, and JavaScript uh, rotates around functions, I mean, I mean uh, centered around functions. Okay, they are one of the most important elements in JavaScript. Uh, think about uh, how JavaScript was born. You know, well, apart from the fact that it was designed in ten days, but uh, you know, uh, it, uh, functions were a fundamental element since the beginning of JavaScript because they wanted to use JavaScript for coding inside a web page. And uh, in a web page, you want to react with some code when some uh, event event happen. So you click a button, you click something, and you want to attach your code at that event. How can you do that? By calling a function, by writing code. So it means the only object that contains code is a function. That's why they are so important and existing since the beginning of JavaScript, of course, in this form, in this form like objects, because you need to attach it around. Okay. Um, so functions are also important because uh, um, Actually, the, the content of the function delimits a block of code which has actually a private scope. So, if you are outside the function and you define a variable inside the function, you cannot see the variable defined inside when you are outside. Okay? So, that's really the only way to, to have uh, some private content in a certain sense in JavaScript. So, not accessible by anybody in the, in the same program. Of course, uh, functions are accepting parameters uh, and returning a value, actually just one value, but you know it can be anything, an object, so an array, uh, an object like the ones we just, say, uh, we just saw, uh, functions, whatever, okay? So this is not really a limitation in practice. Functions themselves are objects, so it means they have a reference and they, in this way, can be used as any other value in JavaScript. They can be assigned to variables, they can be passed as an argument uh, to a function, and used as a return value of a function. Okay, so you can use it uh, uh, in any place where you 
I have an expression that evaluates to, to something in JavaScript. How to declare a function in JavaScript? There are actually three ways, four to be precise, because one will be similar to another. Anyway, this is a very classic one, function, as you have in many other programming languages. That's a name, do, in the red, and parameters, and there's uh, some code inside the brackets, no problem. Okay, that's a classical way. So you write function square x, x is the, the parameter, you call it with 4, it executes its code, so uh, y gets a value 4 times 4, return 16, and you get a return value and you assign it uh, as you like. Okay, so this is the visualization in Python tutorial. Of course, there's not that much to, to see for a function, actually it's an object and points to an object containing the code. That will be executed when when it's called okay so it's not really nothing that can change here because that's the way you write the code uh, so let's uh, talk a little bit about function and how to handle them in the best way in javascript so first of all uh, how to uh, work with parameters of the function well, parameters of the function, you already saw, the, they are just uh, a comma separated the list of parameter names. Okay, so function takes two parameters, A and B. You can have default values, like in, other, in, in some other programming languages, like Python. You just assign it here, okay? So it means also this, this parameter can be optional, but regarding optional parameters, we will talk more in a minute. All parameters are passed by value, that means that uh, well, primitive values are simply copied and uh, non-primitive values, so means objects, etc., arrays, are passed by copying the reference. Okay, the reference is actually copied. Parameters that are not passed in the function call, in the function call get the value undefined. So this is pretty different from other programming languages. So uh, even if parameters are not optional, so let's say we, uh, we have a, a function that gets five parameters, I can call it with just one or zero parameters. JavaScript doesn't give you an error. JavaScript simply says, okay, that's fine. I have uh, five parameters. You specify the first one. I assign the, the value that you specify to the first one and the other just simply get the value undefined. Okay, so it's up to you that you write the function to check for missing optional parameters just to check if the uh, value is undefined, okay, and uh, do whatever you want, assign a default value, whatever, okay. This is a nice way in which you can check for undefined with a triple equal. Or if you remember this uh, syntax with the two pipes, Let's say if you want to have a default value in the code of the function, so not in the parameter, not in the signature of the function, you you have uh, uh, you can write it this way. So if p is not undefined, you will uh, you will get a value of p. Otherwise, you get a default value that you put here if p is undefined. You can have variable number of parameters. That's what we saw before in the example for the arrays. Uh, we can use the operate to the triple dot, so three dots. Here is called REST uh, operator, but more or less the same concept. So basically, all explicitly defined parameters are matched by position, and all the rest goes into the last parameter. That will be converted into an array of values that will contain everything else that is passed to the function. In this way, we can write functions that get a variable number of parameters. So like this sum all, you get the first one, zero is matched to initial val, and the rest is an array. And so it's, uh, you iterate over this uh, as any other array with uh, four off, as we saw last time. Okay, and you do whatever you want, like sum, etc. Okay, another way of specifying the function, actually they are uh, very similar, so 2a, 2b, uh, function with a name or function without, even without a name, and you assign the function, so actually the reference to this uh, object that is the function that contains the code, to another variable. And so it's enough that you have uh, the possibility to use this variable fn, you open the brackets, the uh, the brackets to specify parameters after fn, and you can call the function. 
just having the reference. Indeed, also do is a reference, but this is in the form of a variable, so it's more, much more explicit. Okay. Um, so this the name. Okay, function expression, name function expression, and so on. Uh, this is just a technical technicality, but actually they are the same. They are uh, always uh, function objects, and so actually they are indistinguishable from the uh, other functions. So if you say function square or let cube equal function x even without the name, okay? And you use it in the same exact way. So you use cube here, cube 4 calls uh, function x that will do square 4 times 4 and we return the result which is 64, okay? Uh, <coughs> so um, <coughs> Uh, this is just uh, uh, a bit of uh, nomenclature, so how you call this kind of functions? Well, since you can assign functions uh, in variables, in properties and so on, typically when we assign a function to property, we call that function a method. But this is just a name, for JavaScript that's the same. It's just because in object-oriented programming we are used to call these functions method when you, when you have it uh, on uh, 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 you can access it on an, in an object in, in, in the form of a sort of a property, okay? But actually in, in JavaScript it is actually a property. Or if you pass the function as a parameter to another function, actually we typically call this a callback. That's what we did before for, you know, the sort function. Sort function takes a callback that uh, 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 is executed, so call it back from the function that we call, so the sort function, when it needs to compare values to decide which is greater than uh, than the other. And this is called callback. But actually, again, it's just a function, it's just an object that can pass around, and uh, you know, and this will be very, very common in JavaScript. Uh, third way of uh, declaring a function is the arrow function, as we did again with the sort before. It's a very compact way of declaring function. You see this arrow, actually it's not an arrow, it's not a single character, there are two characters, equal and uh, greater, no, consecutive, two consecutive characters, but they are very, very nice to write and you get used to, to this uh, notation and you will probably use it uh, quite, quite a lot. Okay, because it's very compact, uh, but at, at the same time efficient way to, to declare functions. So again, you need to assign the result to a variable, otherwise you cannot use this function. Okay, because it, you cannot specify a name. There's no place where you can specify a name here. Okay, uh, so you have the params and then you have the, 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 the code to execute. Arrow function is just a shortcut. So Let's define a, a fourth function. So it takes a single parameter x and then it executes uh, the code that is return square times square. Okay, just a shortcut to declare a function. How do you define, uh, I mean, yes, define parameters in a narrow function? There are different ways. Well, if there are no parameters, very simple. <laughs> Open and close the bracket and that's all, okay? If there is a single parameter, well, actually you have two options. You can have a classical way, as we saw before, x between brackets, so the parameter between, single parameter between brackets, or just a parameter without the brackets. So JavaScript understands this syntax. If there are more than one parameters, actually the, the, the brackets are mandatory, so you cannot avoid them. And of course, if you open the brackets, you can do whatever you like with the parameters, so specifying default values, etc., as we did uh, uh, before with the other functions. And then there's the return value. Actually, remember that if you don't return anything, the re default return value for a function is undefined. So you use a function and you assign, uh, you call, sorry, you call the function and the expression or the uh, of calling the function uh, will be evaluated as undefined if there's no return in the function that specify what it should be returned. So it's sort of mandatory to use a return to return a value from a function. There's no default return value except in a few cases here uh, that we will see here. 
Uh, always remember that you can return anything, regardless of the type of definition that you use for the function, you can return uh, anything you like. So objects, arrays, even functions, as we will see in a minute. Uh, arrow functions are a bit special in this regard because they have an implicit return value if there is only one value, but be careful, one value specified in the form of, an, of a single expression, as in the second line here, without the brackets. If you put the brackets and no return, this will evaluate to uh, undefined when you call the function. Because there's ne no return, if you open the brackets, you're forced to put return inside the code. Okay, so just remember this, because maybe you start coding, you write, you open the bracket, uh, you want to write something, then you realize uh, it's much simpler than what you thought, you uh, just write a single expression, you forget the return, but this will, without the return, this will evaluate it as undefined. Why? If you remove the brackets, the expression is the actual return value, the implicit return value. Okay. Actually, one more thing about the functions, which is quite peculiar. We can nest function. Function can be nested. So it means that inside the function, we can start the definition of another function. And it will come with uh, some, uh, I mean, it will come with some complication because uh, it's nice to be able to define functions uh, wherever we like, but uh, this will have a few consequences that we will see uh, shortly. So let's uh, think about this function, if hypotenuse, so just to compute the hypotenuse of a rectangular uh, uh, triangle, triangle. And let's say we deci decide to define this function inside, it's called const square x times x in the form of an arrow function. No brackets here because it's just one parameter, no brackets here because that's an implicit return value. And then we use it, okay, that's fine. Okay, so of course, uh, of course, uh, don't complicate too much the code. So the the arrow syntax is the preferred one when you are inside the function because uh, so the code is not too much complicated. Otherwise, you have function, function, etc. It's equivalent from the point of view of JavaScript. It doesn't change anything, but uh, no, it, it, it's just uh, you know uh, more more readable. Let's say. Uh, the scope of the function we said in the beginning is private, so the inner function cannot be called outside. So yeah, I define square, and if I am outside the, this function, hypotenuse function, uh, I cannot simply write the square something and expect to have the square. The square doesn't exist outside the function, but the inner function might get access, might have access to variables declared in the outside function, okay? So if there are uh, parameters like a and b in the function, uh, this implicit function, this arrow function, that well, they will be accessible. We will see it uh, in a minute. This uh, uh, has a, a very important consequence in JavaScript, uh, that is uh, the, the fact that when you are declaring a function inside another one, basically you are creating a, a so-called closure. But this is a formal definition. A closure is a name given to a feature in the language, JavaScript language, by which a nested function executed after the execution of the outer function can still access outer function scope. But how can we execute the function inside the other one if we say that it's private to that function? Well, we need to return it. We can return that function. If you return that function, you can execute it, right? Because you have the reference. But what happens to the scope of the function that you return? That's the closure. Let's uh, have a look at this example in, in, in a closer way because it's really important to understand this example. So uh, JavaScript uses uh, this uh, so-called lexical scoping. So basically a new function each new function opens a scope with a bracket. Right? Uh, for all the variables declared inside, okay, it opens uh, this scope, uh, and these variables, like my name, is coped inside the function greeter. And 
nested functions like this hello that is a reference to a function defined inside the other one might access these variables it can access my name as well as name that is the parameter of the outside function and the important fact fact here is that every function object remembers the scope where it is defined even after the external function is no longer active so that's the closure concept so look at this example uh, you have uh, this function that defines another function okay uh, be careful here it returns the reference to the function it doesn't call the function if you write with the brackets we call the function and we are returning the return value of the function so the, that's a string it's not what we want here we are returning the reference to the function so the actual function defined inside the other one so const hello tom greeter tom so we called greeter with the parameter tom tom becomes visible to the inside function and this inside function will uh, be coded as return hello plus the value of this variable inside uh, the, the greater, greater function okay so and we return the function that is not executed now it's just returned as a reference okay and this function is returned as a reference and will be later executed but when will be later executed it will remember the scope where it is defined so the values of this uh, um, of these variables basically the variables that could access when it was defined in terms of the lexical scope so where it was written in short hello jerry that's greeter jerry again that's another a reference to another function defined in the function greeter that now we called that define a second reference to a second function that has access to a different scope a scope where my name is Jerry indeed if we call hello Tom which is a reference to that function defined the first time we will get hello Tom and the second time we'll get hello Jerry because that's the same code for the function but the scope that it remembers it's different that's the closure that has been created when the function was defined and returned so you need to think a little bit about this example uh, so the variable my name so this one goes out of scope but it is not destroyed why because the JavaScript interpreter uh, knows that there's a function that still has access to that variable in the, in its scope okay so it can be called and the variable the value of this variable should be available but because when i call this function hello by the reference that i've been storing in another variable that value must be available because it must be used to compute the return value okay so uh, this is a very important concept uh, uh, Try to think a little bit about this uh, this aspect, and next time we will come back on this uh, aspect and see how it can be useful for us in other things, especially defining private scopes. So, a way of hiding the um, the possibility to access a variable except through a function that we uh, allow to use by returning it by uh, from from another one. Okay. But this is the topic for the next lecture. Okay, so that's all for this lecture. Thank you for your attention and see you next time, next Thursday in room 16. Of course, uh, there will be more more space. I'm sorry for, for today. Uh, that's the only day in the course that's, that is a bit critical because next time we will always use this room 10i only for the lab. So there will be half of you each slot so each uh, one hour and a half uh, so it will be not so crowded sorry for, for for today okay so thank you see you on thursday uh, and um, uh, have a nice week